Hi there, Ladrin Bex here. I'm a light and sound therapist, um, but I also work with emotions. And what is emotions? Emotions are the parts of us that need nurturing, that need understanding. And what I've come to know in my many years of uh, exploring spirituality, consciousness, learning about meditation techniques to help people, it's um, there's not been more than a greater teacher than relationships for myself that all the relationships that i've been in if that be friends romantic relationships um family these all different relationships that we have in our lives such as children pets um these can be acquaintances business partners colleagues uh, people that we've been at school with regardless you know we surround our whole lives with different types of people from different walks of life that teach us many different things. But along the way, I'm sure there's been miscommunication, misunderstanding. Perhaps we've got close to that person and our needs haven't been met. So this is one powerful toolkit, which I wish I learned many years ago, because since learning about this, it's helped me understand more about people, about life, about my own needs, about my own desires and how I can give my best to people, uh, people I've never met before, you know, and then I do meet and I, I have to understand what their needs are, you know, in order to nurture them. So this is like new relationships get, that come into my life, you know, perhaps it's romantic, perhaps it's friendship, uh, regardless, it's like we all need nurturing, we all need understanding and a lot of this comes down to communication. So this, uh, these five love languages, which um, were presented to me, I think about six or seven years ago now, um, is based on a, a guy called uh, Gary Chapman. He's helped uh, thousands and millions of people across the world with uh, marriage problems, you know, people who are about to get a divorce and fall out. And he's almost healed those relationships, those connections, just by simply those two people in that dynamic, if it's a friendship, uh, many relationships, to understand more about each other's needs. Now, it, we've seen it in movies, we've seen it in stories when we're younger, you know, the, the prince up on his high horse and the princess down below needing help, being the savior. And, you know, it doesn't matter how much of a strong man or woman that we are, or, you know, how much love we need, it all comes down to understanding. So these five love languages um, are words of affirmation, physical touch, receiving gifts, quality time, and acts of service. So these five things can really, the understanding of these can transform your life. Now, Gary Chapman in his book, um, I read many years ago, I don't really read books, but this was the only book that I couldn't really put down. And there's an unabridged version that you can read along with the book. Um, an audiobook. This is what I did because I sometimes have problem reading like a lot of information and I, I think I read the book in like two days and I'd never done that before because at the time I really need that information for, for like a relationship that I was going through. I thought I could fix it but it, it takes two to understand those those basic needs and these aren't rules. These are just perhaps ideas to somebody but for me, it's powerful tools that two people in a relationship need to really understand, uh, you know, what's going on. So with words of affirmation, th this is one love language that we have that, you know, perhaps we like, say, for example, this is a relationship and everything I'm talking about. So with your partner, your girlfriend, a boyfriend, whoever you may be with or thinking about right now, if you, if you are with somebody or want to be somebody with somebody, is that we have these five basic core needs and usually two or three of those are very strong. You know, we usually have like one very strong one or two or three, but not usually all five are there. But however, we can sometimes feel nurtured by receiving and, and doing the, you know, all those uh, throughout our relationship, you know, as it grows and expands and, you know, nurtures and heals. So the first one, words of affirmation, these are encouraging words of like appreciation em like emphasizing um and it's about not just giving those words but listening too so if someone's main love language is like words of affirmation their heart 
tends to open up and their awareness open up, up to these words of beautiful or supportive nature. Um, so they don't like things like criticism or like, you know, any negative words that can really aggravate the person whose main love language is uh, words of affirmation. You know, they love positive words that can help support them in a, an encouraging time. If they're losing motivation or they want to feel loved, they just want to hear those few words. And it's not just things like, I love you. Those are things that we say, but it's, it's more things like, you know, grabbing your partner's hands and this is something that I would do, you know, if I was in a relationship and I, I loved that person, I'd be grabbing the, you know, the hands and looking into the eyes and saying, I'm really proud of you today, what you've done, um, you know, I think you're amazing, I love you and just things like that and, and those things can really help to um, nurture those core needs of, of a love language. The next one there is, is physical touch. And as, as grabbing the hands there and touching, it's not just about holding hands, it's about hugging. It's about affection, you know? If someone's feeling a bit hurt, just putting your arm around them or rubbing their back a little bit. Um, it could even be using body language to em emphasize a, a feeling, you know? Like if that person is upset, it can, it's not always about putting your arms around them. It's sometimes just, sitting side by side and just having your your legs you know your, your your thighs touch and just being there physically you know because when that person whose love language is strong which is one of mine mine is physical touch you know, I'm a very huggy touchy person in, in a relationship you know I like to hold hands I like to hug um I like to receive that too um so if if, if a person in a conversation these two people in a conversation in a relationship are much further away in the room and they're given these encouraging you know like words of affirmation but the physical touch isn't there they're very distant it it's um it can be ha having a huge impact you know and the last thing you want to do is tell your partner hey like can you come here i want to hug it it doesn't sound right you know um but when you understand the person's needs then you understand that they need physical attention like you know being you know showing physical affection and and intimacy or even it's a kiss on the cheek if you're listening you know just just things like that you know um so things to avoid in in these situations can be like you know not physically touching that person at all you know like neglecting them like going many days without physically seeing that person or um not receiving the affection themselves like pushing that person away so in all these love languages i've come to learn is that um if you are a physical touch person, it's very obvious because you'll be doing it a lot to say your partner or the person that you're dating at the time. And, you know, it's almost like you're expecting it back because that's your main love language. And so if you don't get it back, then these are things that can really, you know, sabotage a relationship is, you know, not like receiving affection, like not so warm, like coldly or neglect. And those things can really damage those core needs of a person and they're not going to feel loved so the other one is receiving gifts now this is sometimes an up and down one for many people you know not everyone wants to receive a gift they rather have positive you know affirmations of words or physical touch but some people just love to receive a gift you know like like women or, or even men you know loving flowers to be brought for them or you know buying some food for for the house or um just I don't know, surprising them with a cake or something that they love that's healthy um, or even something for their job or their work or say, for example, you're in this relationship dynamic and, and um, you know, the, the person whose love language is receiving gifts and, they, you know, their partner turns up one day, um, I don't know, it could just be of a little plant or it could be with, a, you know, some pens to help with their work because they're always losing their pens. It could be something so thoughtful that it's like, oh, wow, you really thought of me? That really touched my heart, you know, because they, they're receiving that. So um, it's it's making your partner a priority, you know, it's making them feel, feel loved. And, and the negative effect of this is that if you're in a relationship and the person that you are dating or with, um, their love language is receiving gifts and you're with them and out about and then with a with a friend or somebody else that comes into the mix and your partner you know gives their friend a gift and not 
their own partner, that can sometimes have a, a negative effect. It can feel like their their love language hasn't been met, it hasn't been heard, hasn't been um, like respected almost. And these are the things that can sometimes really hurt a person. Um, so it can be small, small like small things. It can be just small little gifts. It can be just almost an act of service and that's another lang love language but it's doing something out of your heart that you feel like your partner needs but also listening to what they need and what they want so it's not always about what they need or what they want some it doesn't matter sometimes um the person who love language is strong with uh, receiving gifts is you know they like to give gifts also again this is all reflected you can understand a person by their actions you know if they're very hugging you understand that they're a physical affection person or if they're always giving gifts you know that they like to receive gifts too you know it can really touch their hearts so um that goes on to acts of service you know very similar in a way because you're doing something um however acts of service is an action perhaps included in the phrase where you are doing something um so take example a, a man in a relationship um you know starts dating a woman and she's complaining not all you know, perhaps the man's come into her house, for example, and he's always noticed that the light doesn't work. And and the woman, for example, like says, oh, um, you know, I, I'm too short to, for example, to, to reach the light to change it, or, I, you know, I haven't got any steps here or ladder. And then the, the man in the relationship, you know, because he's perhaps tall enough, for example, um, you know, can reach that light bulb, change it, and without, you know, not even planning, just doing it out of his heart, has just said to her, hey, I changed the light bulb, here's, um, here's the old one back. It can really just, if that person's, if her act, love language is acts of service, that can really touch, you know, that part of her that needs nurturing, like she feels safe, she feels secure, she feels looked after, you know, that part of her that's being, um, you know, adored or understood that, oh, I, I really needed that done, but I couldn't reach it for example again it could be the other way around it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be that way it's just an example of you know a man doing that for a woman it could be the other way around you know men like things done for them too um so it can be things that you know a partner has gone out their way to make the person dinner or to take them out uh shopping or you know taking that for a meal and paying as well it's looking after nurturing their partner their lover because they want to and again um it's sometimes not always it's it's usually you know the person that's doing this is because they like to re receive it too this is where the miscommunication can come in and not understanding like oh why did he do that or why didn't he pay or why didn't she why didn't she pay for me <laughs> or, for example it's because um these things happened you know um so if you don't do these things in acts of service and you don't, you know, if you make a misery of all oh, these two tasks or two, I don't have time for this right now, those needs aren't being met by, by your partner. So, you know, acts of service is, is one big one because you should be doing things for your partner, you know, as much as you can or much as they want to. But if they don't want that, then you understand that, okay, hey, like, I, I shouldn't be doing this. These things take time to understand, to understand to really uh, be aware of and you you know in my, my experience i i don't ever want to be a relationship coach in a relationship i want to make the tools and awareness understandable so that perhaps you know we both look at the same we look we're basically on the same page and we understand each other's faults our weaknesses our strengths and the, the needs that we need um so one of my uh one of my love languages is quality time, which is the fifth one. And reason for that is because maybe, a, you know, a lot of people like quality time. And quality time is when you are having proper quality time with your lover, with your partner, with no distractions or interrupted focus of, of you two as, as a couple. So it can be perhaps a very difficult situation if you are with somebody that you really love and perhaps they have a child that's always always around or the, the the pet that's always there and it can um, sometimes 
be, be very difficult, like a housemate always there, so you don't get proper quality time. I think every relationship needs this. Some people like to, to share or to be open in relationships, that's fine, but you know, um, people who, who love quality time like it just to be them too, to be romantic, to have space, to have privacy, um, to have one-to-one -one time, which is very important, you know, for a stabilizing relationship without any distractions. So if people aren't getting that, then, you know, the relationship can sometimes dissolve away. Um, and this quality time is, is a time where you can create special moments with each other. Um, you know, you can basically, like, I don't know, do things personal, go for walks. It's like making love, um, having the special time, the quality time together, being away for like a weekend, a weekend break or a holiday. So when these needs aren't being met, it's when um, perhaps there's distractions. You're not um, making the relationship work by being together, having quality time. Um, or being away from each other from long periods of time. So, yeah, for example, mine, my, you know, one of my main love languages is quality time. I like being around that person, I like doing things, I like sharing. Um, so, yeah, if you want to know another one of mine, mine is physical touch, words of affirmation. Those are my, you know, my three top ones. There's, there are other ones I like, like receiving gifts and having things done for me, but the things that really touch my heart personally are things of, you know, which fill my love tank and this is what Gary Chapman says in his book that we all have a love tank and if those needs aren't being met then our tank starts to get empty we want our tank our love heart you know our, our heart tank to be always full of love and understanding and, and respect so this can get very very deep there are other um, uh, authors out there that I follow um, mainly like audiobooks such as Marianne Williamson uh, Bernie Brown um, Gary Chapman um, Anthony Robbins, he talks on a lot of things as well, and as well as Brian uh, McWilliam, Williamson, I think. Uh, those are some um, authors, uh, people out there in the world who talk a lot about emotions uh, in relationships. So if you've enjoyed this um, about the five love languages, this is something that's really helped me understanding more about me in a relationship as well as others again it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship this can be parents it can be colleagues it can be friends and trying to understand them too and you can even reflect this on children and and pets too like you know what are their basic core needs what are their their love languages that that they speak you know and you probably understand now listening to this if you've never heard this before perhaps why people are cold you know um those who don't give affection but um, give you your time or give you their, their space because they like words. So these things take time to really understand. But if you sit down with your partner, um, you know, your, your spouse, um, whoever it is in this relationship, if you sit down and talk about what love languages, you know, you have, and there are tests you can do online to know which main love languages that you are, then you can understand more about your needs. However, it's always important to cover them all, you know, from time to time, to keep the relationship spicy, exciting, uh, fulfilled. So um, I'm always trying to be aware in, in a, you know, relationships that I get into, um, be that romantic or friendships, that we understand each other's core understanding. So thanks for watching. I hope this has had an eye opener to you. This is all about healing. This is this is part of light and sound. This is all vibration. This is all love. And these are just things that I like to share with you. So I hope you've enjoyed. Till next time, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon.